classic criticism has never paid any attention to the reader. For it, the writer is the only person in literature. We are now beginning to let ourselves be fooled no longer by the arrogant, antifrastical recrimination of good society in favor of the very thing it sets aside, ignores, smothers, or destroys. We know that to give writing its future, it is necessary to overthrow the myth. The birth of the reader must be at the cost of the death of the author. As soon as a fact is narrated no longer with a view to acting directly on reality, whatever is felt upon the page without being specifically named there, that, it seems to me, The voice is loses great. its origin. The author enters into his own death. Writing begins. Sorry, but this is all a coincidence. The explanation of a work is always sought in the man or woman who produced it, as if it were always in the end the voice of a single person, the author, confiding in us. The sway of the author remains powerful. A text is not a line of words releasing a single theological meaning, but a multidimensional space. At any moment, a particle is whatever it's measured to be. It has no objective reality. The reporters had made a big deal about her final word, Nobody could agree. Others said no, that it showed she was still clinging to life. And others disagreed, claiming that writing life at the moment of death meant that she understood that life and death were one. But the fact is, nobody understood what she really meant except me and my dad, and we weren't sane. The image of literature to be found in ordinary culture is tyrannically centered on the author. His person, his life, his tastes, his passion. The observer exists within the quantum system. You can't stand apart. There is no other time than that of the Annunciation, and every text is eternally written here and now. This is it. This is what now feels like. Ruth turned the page, felt her heart miss a beat. The page was blank. She turned another blank. She knew the pages had once been filled. Maybe she changed her mind or something. It is language which speaks, not the author. To write is through a prerequisite in personality. Together we'll make magic. Who had conjured whom? Surely a reader wasn't capable of this bizarre kind of conjuration, pulling words from the void. It's words only explainable through other words, and so on indefinitely. Was now the one writing her into being? The reader confronting the blank page, it's like writer's block, only in reverse. Like I have this beautiful world in my head, but when I try to remember it in order to write it down, I change it. We still have the idea that a novel is written by the writer alone. Author, reader, same thing. Jiko, probably. Okay. Uh, hi there. Uh, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this project now that you've come to its conclusion. So this whole thing came to be after much consideration of the idea of observer subjectivity, which is heavily promulgated throughout Ozeki's novel. She connected this idea of lack of objective reality to many different symbols she brought up, such as um, quantum mechanics, authorship, and just language use. Out of this, I began thinking about how the story, you know, very broadly, is about an author and their possible suicide. This clearly made me think of the striking essay by Roland Barthes titled The Death of the Author, and I found that the two works shared many themes about the importance of readership. 
However, you know, simply now isn't dead in the book. In fact, her life and her actions have resounding effects throughout the novel. From a deeper analysis, I found that although Ezeki places importance on the reader, that she explicitly doesn't kill the author, metaphorically or literally. She's ostensibly the protagonist of the book. In fact, through Ruth, she decries the loss of authorship. Likewise, through Ruth and Now's cooperative role together, especially with Ruth, in a way, taking on the role of author-reader through her dream interactions, I found that A Tale for the Time Being is a response to Barth's ideas and encourages a collaborative relationship between reader and author. I decided to represent the conversation between these pieces of work through an assemblage film as a means of engaging with the audience's necessity to interpret work, as well as demonstrate the viability of these ideas in non-literary artistic mediums, such as film. To begin, I wish to demonstrate the cultural influence which Barth's ideas had on the literary and cultural landscape through the literalization of his metaphor. Uh, in this way, he goes around and literally kills the authors whose life has an effect on their work. I wanted to show how this mentality can be limited in a certain way, such as how lack of historical context of authors like Willa Cather can limit our understanding of her work or how certain trends in an author's work, such as racist depictions of Dr. Seuss, developed into more tolerant works later on, and how this can help us develop a broader understanding of their portfolio, or just general literary trends in authorship. Moreover, I wanted to demonstrate how Barth's ideas have disseminated through society, such as how authors are now taking themselves out of their work, essentially authorial suicide, or how fans are taking part in killing authors, like when faced with problematic actions such as the transphobia of J.K. Rowling. After going around and killing several authors, then, Barthes, played by me, finally confronts Ruth Ozeki. At first it seems as if she agrees with him regarding the lack of objectivity, however this quickly changes. In the end, she is able to show how, without the author there, there would be nothing but a blank book. And so in creating a work, the life of an author has influence over it and can change your perception of it. Moreover, in reading this work, the reader has to connect with the author, and in creating an image of that book in their mind, they too become a kind of author. Thus, Barthes for a moment becomes Ozeki. After this encounter, Ozeki pushes this point to help bring the dead writers back to life, and a quote from a contemporary author about cooperative writing goes off into the world. Of course, this is not a summary list of all the choices within the film. For example, in taking the role of Barthes, I, as the author, and I'm certain in myself, and fundamentally altering the work from the inside, representing these broader ideas of authorship. However, I hope this has been informative for you. I mean, what do I really know? I'm taking control of how these words are spoken right now instead of letting you read them and take what you will. You've been the one listening to me and maybe picturing me as you look at a blank screen, or probably just spacing out in your head. Well, you know, I guess I wasn't really done after all.